here is Tadalafil, Cialis, giving me the ability to perform, but I had zero desire to perform in the middle of the act. I cannot feel my wife emotionally at all. I didn't want to touch her. I didn't want to kiss her. I had just literally was not a human being anymore. What's up YouTube, I'm Mike. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about the importance of estrogen control. Uh, but first I would just like to thank all of the new subscribers and commenters on my previous video. Obviously I did not expect that video to get the, to get the views that it did. But welcome everyone, uh, all the new people to my channel. Um, today I'm talking about an experiment that I just recently did in my home with my estrogen levels. So I'm going to real briefly explain how that occurred and then get to the juicy details. Uh, this video is going to contain uh, a lot of very personal information, uh, sexually explicit uh, language. So if that's not your thing, please stop watching right now. Uh, also, I'd like to say I'm not a doctor. I'm talking about my experience. I'm absolutely not recommending anyone do this ever for any reason. So um, I am I'm on testosterone replacement therapy. I am prescribed 200 milligrams a week of testcipionate. I take that 100 milligrams on Saturday and 100 milligrams on uh, Tuesday. I do that to keep my hormone levels uh, as stable as possible and to attempt to control estrogen because uh, as Derek from More Place More Dates has, has talked about extensively, it's good to have estrogen in your body. It uh, helps the cardio and I think neuroprotective um, functionality of testosterone. And without it, then you lose those neuroprotective effects. Uh, he's very um, clear in stating that it's actually potentially okay for males to have a higher level of estrogen than is the, is than is falls within the normal range if they're cycling antibiotics, antibiotics, if they're cycling anabolics, or they are potentially on a high dose of TRT or whatever, because if you have the super level, super physiological level of testosterone, then having an abnormally high level of estrogen can, can sometimes be a good thing. Uh, I hope I got that correct. Uh, I happen to be a person that is extraordinarily sensitive to estrogen. Uh, when I first started on TRT, they had to up my dose of Arimidex from one milligram a week to a milligram and a half because when my E2 level got just barely above normal, I immediately started developing gyno. Uh, I have it currently, uh, so I'll show you what that looks like or attempt to show you what that looks like. Um, I don't know if this is going to come out in this picture, but my, my nipples are very puffy on both sides. Um, you can see, I think you can see that, uh, that mass right there. Uh, basically that is from a, a just barely super physiological amount of, of estrogen. My body just for whatever reason cannot tolerate it. So the study that I did or the experiment that I did came from the fact that the FDA uh, recently yanked HCG as part of the TRT protocol. My provider would not give it to me. And so uh, because I was taking a milligram and a half of Arimidex on test SIP 200 plus HCG, when I stopped getting the HCG, um, my E2 started to come down. So I decided to do an experiment and see what would happen if I crashed it completely. Uh, a lot of bodybuilders will take excessive amounts of uh, Rimidex in the weeks leading up to competition in order to try to completely dry out. Obviously that comes with a myriad of effects and I'm going to talk about those now. So I was taking as much as 5 milligrams of Rimidex per week. I have extra on hand for my, T my TRT protocol and I crashed my E2 all the way. I can't remember the exact number. I'll put, it, uh, I'll put the, um, the lab report up here. I think it was less than 5 picograms per deciliter. Um, so I knocked it basically completely out or nearly completely out. Uh, I also take Tadalafil, which is Cialis. So I did not experience what some guys uh, complain of, which is uh, erectile dysfunction. Uh, that could have been that could have been because of the Cialis. I think likely is because of the Cialis. But what I did experience was um, extremely dry look. Uh, if you look at some of the previous physique updates that I did, I am very, very dry in those updates. That was during the period of time where I crashed my E2. Uh, my workouts were brutal during that period of time. I experienced a significant amount of joint pain, um, which is also common with very low E2 levels. 
I did not feel as much of the reduced energy. Uh, some guys can complain of lethargy, having a hard time getting out of bed, not really being able to function. Um, I didn't experience that, although I do drink a lot of caffeine in the day, so uh, it could have been that the caffeine offset the, the lethargy that would have come from the low E2 level. But what I really want to talk about this video, and I've really rambled on too long, was the substantially negative relationship effects that I had from crushing my E2. Um, I, did, I was able to maintain my erection quality, but I absolutely, completely lost all interest in sex with my wife, um, as most men are probably want to do, you know, married or not, we check out girls in the gym, we check out girls on the street, coworkers, whatever. I completely lost all interest in the opposite sex across the board. I noticed even when I crushed my E2 that I had a hard time interacting with some of the females that I work with. Like uh, our relationships suffered. Like I, I lost interest in the things they talked about. I couldn't give a shit about the stories about their families or their struggles at work. Basically, I just checked out completely emotionally across the board. My sex life with my wife went absolutely in the toilet. Um, there was some mental drive or maybe it's just that we typically have a lot of sex in this house and so there was sort of a habitual thing where I, I knew we should be doing this more than we were and so I would be driven to try to keep up with the, uh, with the norm and I went in a very short period of time from being a guy who really enjoyed, for lack of a better term, sport fucking or like sex was you know a, a protracted event I really enjoyed trying to please my wife I really enjoyed you know various positions toys sex furniture you name it like we do all of that and in a couple of weeks period of time I got to the point where I was literally having arguments with my wife like complaining that sex was taking too long, that I didn't have any interest, that I just wanted to fucking get it over with. Um, my physical sensation was nearly non-existent. So here is Tadalafil, Cialis, giving me the ability to perform, but I had zero desire to perform. In the middle of the act, I cannot feel my wife emotionally at all. I didn't want to touch her. I didn't want to kiss her. I had just literally was not a human being anymore. Um, I, I just wanted it to get over with. Like, um, and then this progressively got worse to the point where uh, our communication during the day was breaking down. Obviously, I'm, I'm doing this complaining about a sex life that I've never complained about before, that, that we didn't have issues with you know, prior to that. And... Um, then it got to the point where I literally I was struggling, <laughs> I was struggling to feel her. Like suddenly it felt like, <laughs> suddenly it felt like she'd gotten very loose and I just didn't have any desire like at all. So uh, I felt, felt very strongly this was due to the due to the experiment that I was running. And I think honestly, if it had not been for the fact that she's very you know, aware of the stuff that I get up to around here and knew that I was experimenting and knew that I was planning on making this video, we probably would have gotten divorced. Unfortunately, I said a lot of really cruel things to her during, during that period of time uh, that I hope our relationship will recover from. So yeah, um, really not a good idea at all to play games with your estrogen levels. Uh, if you guys are on TRT, if you are cycling anabolics, please, for the love of God, get your blood work done regularly. Make sure your, your estrogen levels are within the normal range if possible. If high, if you happen to be one of these guys that can have, you know, 100 picograms per de deciliter um, E2 level and not be getting the gyno that I have, congratulations to you because this sucks. Luckily, I have not had any lasting effects. When my E2 gets out of whack and the gyno flares up, it seems to just be a swelling of the glands. There's no like actual fatty tissue that's being developed. So once I knock it back down to normal, then the swelling completely subsides and you can't tell that it was ever there. Thankfully, I don't know how many times I'm gonna get away with that before it becomes 
uh, you know, something that I have to have a surgery to address. Um, but again, I just thought I would I'd make this video that's probably not been quick now to share that experience in case any of you are out there competing, thinking about crashing your E2 levels or uh, you're on TRT, please stay on top of it because it is no joke and uh, my, exper my experiment very nearly led to a divorce. So hope you guys enjoyed this content. Hope you got something out of it. Uh, lots more to follow. Again, thank you to all the new subscribers and we'll see you on the next one.